What happens when James Bond meets Blade? Hmm? Okay, everybody, we're going all the way back to 1993 to look at a movie that doesn't always pop up when people think of the great Sean Connery flicks, and sometimes they don't think of it when it pops up as one of the great Wesley Snipes flicks. But either way, we're going there today. We're looking at Rising Sun. Before we go any further, and before we dig into this gem anymore, once and again, and as always, to the trailer. Negotiated with the Japanese before. Well, this is hardly a negotiation. What is it now? It's a homicide. A detective, an expert in ancient wisdom. Every aspect of your appearance and behavior will reflect on you and on me as your senpai. That wouldn't happen to be anything like Master, now, would it? A cop who learned his lessons on the street. Senpai, apple pie, whatever it is you want me to call you, we have a murder here. I want to solve it. You'll probably find them irritating tonight. Do keep your hands at your sides. The Japanese find big arm movements threatening. Believe it or not, I have done this before. You know, I do know these things. You come down already. Yeah? Well, now I go back up. Maybe come down, go up 10 times more. We're still a police in our own country. He's contaminating the crime scene. I don't want this film. We must undertake our own private inquiry. I'd like to see tonight's desk for the 46th floor. There! One knows where to look. He killed the girl. I doubt it. Well, I saw it on the desk. Did you? Why have you been, Lieutenant Smith? You don't think video can be altered? I'll be damned. The other knows what to see. You know what's true? When something looks too good to be true, then it's not true. It's a partnership that's not supposed to work. We're safe around here. You call this safe? Senpai, rough neighborhoods may be America's last advantage. Keep your hands down. These guys don't like big arm movements. They might shoot you. It's a case they're not supposed to solve. It's a game they're not supposed to win. From the number one bestseller. Sean Connery. You should know I'm a black belt. But of course you are, dear. <laughs> Wesley Snipes. Don't lose your temper. I don't lose my temper. Rising Sun. Okay, everybody, this motion picture was directed by Philip Kaufman. Did some stuff you might remember? Maybe not. He did. Anyway, he did the right stuff. He did Henry and June, and The Wanderers, and The White Dawn, and The Unbearable Lightness of Being. And he was also a writer and a screenplay writer, and he was involved in all the Indiana Jones flicks and the Outlaw Josie Whale. So, big career, long career, is what it was. It's just the way it goes. Okay, playing John Connor. I'm not even kidding. His character's name is John Connor. This was after Terminator. It's Sean Connery. Let's hit this. We're talking about he's been in legendary shit like Zardos and Meteor and Outland and Highlander and The Untouchables and uh, The Presidio and The Hunt for Red October, which I love even though it has an asshole bald one in it, and Medicine Man and, and The Rock and Entrapment, and of course all the James Bond flicks like Dr. No and Goldfinger and Thunderball and Diamonds Are Forever. So, Sean Connery, just passed not too long ago, fucking legendary. Playing Webb Smith, Webster Smith actually, is Wesley Snipes. A really good thing going for a while, folks. Let's kick it. We're talking about he's been in some classics like White Man Can't Jump, New Jack City, U.S. Marshals, The Fan, Murder at 1600, Drop Zone, Demolition Man, Jungle Fever, and uh, Major League, and The Art of War. And for me, he will always be Blade. From Blade, Blade 2, and 
Well, even Blade Trinity is what it is. Playing Tom Graham, a complete asshole, is hard. Well, not he's an asshole, not the character. But you get what I mean. Is Harvey Keitel. Let's kick it. We're talking about he's been in some legendary stuff like Mean Streets and Saturn 3, which you all know I love, and Taxi Driver, and The Border, and Bad Lieutenant, and Reservoir Dogs, and The Piano, and Pulp Fiction, and Copland, and Little Nicky, and Finding Graceland, and The Gray Zone, which nobody remembers, but it was a good flick, and Be Cool, and Red Dragon. So, big career, long career. Massive amount of shit. And good shit at that. Sometimes underground shit, but good, whatever. Fuck it. Let's keep going. Playing Eddie Sakamura. He is one of my, my fucking... I love this dude as an actor. I just think he's fucking great. Kerry Aguri Tagawa. God, I hope I said that right. Fucking probably just screwed it all up my head anyway. Anyway, before we go any further, let's just start spitting out some names. We'll talk about he's been in Little Gems like... The Perfect Weapon. And Showdown in Little Tokyo. In Mortal Kombat, in The Phantom, in American Dragons, in The Art of War, in Pearl Harbor, in Balls of Fury, in Tekken, in massive amounts of TV work, man. This guy is an awesome actor. He's just an awesome actor. It's just the way it is. Playing your citizen. Legend. I've talked about him before. During the Killer Elite. Mako. Let's hit it. Like I just mentioned, he was in The Killer Elite. He was also in some other great stuff like Conan the Barbarian, Conan the Destroyer, The Sand Pebbles, An Eye for an Eye, and you know I love that old school Chuck Norris shit, Under the Rainbow, and Sidekicks, and Pearl Harbor, and Bulletproof Monk, and etc, 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 etc. I sound like Yul Brenner then. Playing Senator Morton, Ray Wise has that face you're going to recognize instantly, but he's been in a lot of shit. We're talking about he has been in stuff like Robocop and Powder and Jeepers Creepers 2 and on TV in Dallas and the Colbys and Twin Peaks and 24 and How I Met Your Mother and Mad Men. So when you see his face, you're like, holy shit, I know that. Actually, he just did another movie a couple of years ago. I know I'm sidetracking right now. Oh my God. Infestation or something it's about these giant bugs from another planet that land on planet Earth and they're running around like crazy and he's his kid's father and it was fucking he was really good at it and the fucking movie was funny. I gotta put if I didn't get that right, I'll put the name underneath it. So it watch it. And there's also some other names in this motion picture. I can't go through everybody because I'll be here all day. But we're talking legendary people. We're talking Steve Buscemi was in this thing. Come on, Reservoir Dogs, all the way up until Grown Ups, which I didn't even like that movie, but it just popped into my head, so I said it. And Chia Carrera, come on. Wayne's World. Wayne's World. That's all I need to say. Also, we're talking Stan Shaw, who's in tons and tons and tons of shit. Man, I just covered him not too long ago when we were talking about fucking Runaway. And also Kevin Anderson, who's popped up in some things here and there. You'd remember them more back in the 80s. Just the way it went. But they're all in this. They all have pretty good roles where they do quite a bit of speaking. I should have really made them all into stars of this thing. But for time constraints, let's keep this moving. Okay, everybody. I'm going to try to do this in 90 seconds or less to keep it fast, keep it entertaining, keep it moving so we can get to the summation where we'd all much rather be and have our most fun. And I'm only going to touch a few things in here because this is a long movie. It's a convoluted movie with a whole lot of little subplots, and I can't touch everything, so I'm going to keep it straight and forward. You got Eddie Sakamoto. He likes karaoke. He likes hot chicks. He likes fast cars. Anyway, he's got to go to this big gala one night. Mm -hmm. And it's at this giant plaza to this big corporation. There's all these mergers taking place. There's all these companies buying out of the companies. There's all this. You get the idea. It's Wall Street. Anyway, they go to the thing. And next thing you know, his girlfriend turns up dead on the boardroom table. Naked as a jaybird. Just had herself some crazy sex. Well, she's dead. They call in the police. Who they call in? Wesley Snipes. He's kind of a liaison to the Japanese community. Knows a little bit about the language. Knows a little bit about the... Society, they bring him in, but they need more. They give him another partner. They bring in John Connor. Sean Connery. Anyway, he is well versed. He's almost too well versed in the Asian culture. Some think he's on the take. Some think he's working for the Japanese corporations. It is what it is. They go in, they investigate. And who do they run in? Old partner of Webb's, 
That's right, Harvey Keitel. And he's one of those asshole characters, you know what I mean? Thinks he knows everything, but he don't know shit. You see that in the movie. It is what it is. Stereotypical. Whatever. But they know something's going on and they're investigating. But is it a murder? Was it an accidental sex mistake? Because this chick was into some pretty kicky shit. Was this a setup? Hmm. There's senators. There's businessmen. There's police. And there's some cops that are on the take, were on the take, still on the take, potentially on the take. Huh. You get the idea. Anyway, the movie grows from there. And we start to learn that Mr. Eddie Sakamoto, the recently deceased, might have been, well, nah, that's just too much. I think I'm going to leave it go with that. And we're going to go right to the summation because that's where this motion picture will shine. Okay, everybody, what makes Rising Sun work? Rising Sun really is a misplaced adventure of its time. Let me explain. When you watch this motion picture, this motion picture is a film noir flick. This is a detective flick from the 30s and 40s. This isn't a, a modern movie by any stretch of the imagination. They just dressed it in modern shit to make it feel modern. It plays like a classic film noir. It rolls like a classic film noir with a lot of martial arts and some titties. But if you take them out, you're going to see this is just an old detective noir motion picture from 50, 60, 70 years ago, brought forward into the 90s, given a little bit of a modern makeover, given a little bit of a different shine, and then delivered to you on a modern, at the time, plate. Let's get to the basics. First off, the directing. Phil Coffin did a good job. Movie looks nice, feels nice, plays nice, rolls nice, is the way it is. You got some great, great acting in this, and that's what really, really, really is one of the things that sell this. Of course, you got Sean Connery. Sean Connery is just fucking amazing in this. He's as good as it needs to be. He's Sean Connery delivers, as always. Wesley Snipes does a great job playing the younger cop, dealing with the older cop, all that kind of shit. Wesley Snipes knows how to act, and he delivers in this. Kerry Tagawa as Eddie Sakamoto. Fucking yo. That dude is the shit. Love that dude in flicks. He delivers here, plays it great, plays it kind of that devil may care, a little bit sleazy, but likable, a little bit whatever, whatever. He nails it and he makes the character just what you need it to be to get involved in it. Of course, you got Mako. Legend. I mean, come on, man. Legend. I'm not going to get into how good he can act because you've seen it in other motion pictures. And if anybody was ever made to play a sleazy senator that only gave a shit about his campaign and himself, it was Ray Wise. Come on, let's face it. That's kind of the vibe because often a lot of the roles that he plays, he was perfectly cast in this. That's all you need to know. Now, does this motion picture have a few flaws? Yeah. Does it have a few glaring flaws? Maybe. There's times in this motion picture you're watching, you're like, this is blatantly two guys in a car in a garage with somebody spraying rain over the windshield and a bad-looking screen behind them. It shows glaringly. And it makes no sense that Webb, somebody who's very skilled in the martial arts and a liaison to the Japanese community, never understood or heard the word sensei. I mean, he's, he's speaking in Jap Japanese at points in this motion picture. He, he never heard a sensei? He never, like, fucking watched the Karate Kid? It's, I mean, any, uh, sensei's like, just like a word. I could go up to almost anybody and say, Sensei, and he's like, Sensei, what's that mean? What's the... And you're like, dude, you're saying fucking, you're saying all this shit, and you don't know some common knowledge? Shit like that, where you're just like, okay, whatever. I mean, why the fuck are they going to do that? That's stupid. <sighs> whatever. But you forgive shit like that, because as you're watching this motion picture, you understand, or you start to realize, this is a motion picture that was never meant to be taken literally. It was never meant to be taken seriously. It's a noir flick. It's a movie that happens that never happened in a time and a place that happens that never took time and never took place. Yes, it's LA. Yes, it's the mid-90s. Yes, it's real in that regard. But as you watch it, the way it unfolds, the way these things happen, what goes down in the motion picture, you never really feel like it's real life. You never really feel like these things could ever happen, especially Especially when Sean Connery starts walking around and giving people the ninja taps of death and knocking them unconscious for periods of time just by going, Tuh. it's not real. It's not meant to be real. That's where it carries a little bit of that Asian mysticism mixed in 
with the film noir to give you a movie that kind of sometimes feels like it's just one big dream that somebody's remembering instead of a flick that you're actually watching. As a side little note, you see some of the classic awesome Asian bad guys floating around in this thing. I mean, some of the guys that you've seen pop up in like fucking Big Trouble in Little China and Perfect Weapon and all those other goddamn 80s Asian movies. You see these guys in there and it's so cool just to see them. You're like, fucking I know him, I know him, I know him, I know him. There's so many of them that they're like, Eddie, it's boys, Eddie's gang, and they're all floating around, and you're just like, this fucking shit is great, I get to see these guys again that I've seen in 15 other flicks, and here they are in a little group again. All right, everybody, if you get a chance, get out there and see Rising Sun. It, it never really gets talked about as one of Connery's greats, or one of Connery's big monster hits, but it definitely shouldn't be forgotten, and it ranks above some of the ones that people probably remember him for even more. And of course, you got Wesley Snipes, the co-star of this motion picture, and you know he gets more linked into the Blade thing or whatever. I, is what it is. But they both were in this. This is a classic flick that shouldn't be forgotten or overlooked. And there's some fun to it. And it never stops being fun for a Quan Moore movie. All right, be good. Take care. Stay out of trouble. Help a friend. Be kind to a neighbor. And above all else, never, ever, ever, ever. Take any bullshit from anybody. Be good.